I'll announce it again next week for those of you who. <laughs> yeah, 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 you could do that. Um, so we do have a few announcements for you. We're going to call our sister Chris up, but I wanted to say real quickly that when I first got saved, I remember <clears throat> talking with Pastor Ray, and I shared this many times before, but before I got saved, I used to listen to rock and roll music. Like, I like rock and roll. And to be specific, it was more like metal almost I used to like. And I would only listen to metal music. And I told Pastor Ray, oh, man, I got to give up my rock and roll music if I get saved, you know? And I was like, I had a hard time imagining that I would have to let that go. And Pastor Ray was like, oh, no worry. Get all kind of music, Christian music. Get reggae Christian music. Get uh, <clears throat> Hawaiian Christian music. Get all kind. Get rock and roll Christian music. And then um, this morning I come and I thought we was going to have Kachi Kachi Christian music, that last song. <laughs> oh, my Puerto Rican was coming out. I thought it was going to be... Uh, 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 Spanish Christian music. I was like, I was impressed with Pastor Ray this morning. Um, but that's just to say that, you know, it's so funny how when you're a new believer and you're still spiritually young, you know, drinking milk, like the thing that I was most worried about was that I cannot listen to music, you know, and then now years later, it's like, oh, that was easy to give up. You know? um, but spiritual growth. So I'm going to call our sister Chris up. She has a bunch of announcements for us. Thank you, Chris. <clears throat> God loves you. <laughs> okay, so I'll be here for the next, this Sunday, and then two more after. But we're going to be on YouTube Live the whole time just because we're working out all the kinks and figuring out how these little <coughs> mics work and all kinds of things. So if you're not here, just go on YouTube. You can find us there. And you can also find all of our services all the way back to March 2020. Yeah, so you can watch all kinds of old things there. Get, you know, probably a service every single day for quite a while. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. Um, also, there's quiet zones back there because right now, I don't know how much is going into the mic and how much might be coming through the air, so don't stand over there and gossip. <laughs> <laughs> the YouTubers will know everything. Um, <laughs> on Monday, people will be getting together to pray for you, so if you have prayer requests, please put them in the bowl back there by Grandma Sue's seat. Uh, Wednesday Bible study, 5 o'clock right here. Yeah. Lots of fellowship, including food. Yes. Uh, Thursday is Hula at 5 o'clock right here. If you want to join, see Kiala so she can let you know in case things get canceled or something happens. Friday, uh, Yard Ninjas at 8 a.m. Yeah, come and join them. There's all so many things that they do around here. Um, Friday night, Celebrate Recovery. Yeah. Six o'clock right here. <coughs> We'd love to see you, but we won't tell anyone that we saw you. <laughs> um, Saturday, men's ministry. When's the third Saturday this month? Just had it. So June, the third Saturday in June uh, will be men's ministry. Women's ministry is always the last Saturday. So yeah. that will be we just had yesterday. yesterday. Yeah. I didn't update my calendar. Um, and then, so the last Saturday in June at 8 a.m. on Zoom only. Discipleship class is still meeting. Amen. Wow. Good job. Halfway through. Almost halfway, halfway, halfway through. Oh. All right. Good job. Um, yes. Backyard Kids Club is coming up June 3rd through 7th. Yeah. That's, that's next week. Yes. Next week. Woohoo. Um, from 10 to 2? Um, Monday will be 9 to 2, but the rest of the week is 10 okay, to 2. Okay, Monday 9 to 2, the rest of the week 10 to 2. The theme is following Jesus changes everything. Yes. What a great theme. If you want to help out, support in any way, please see Sandy or Stacy, um, And, of course, keep them in your prayers. Yes. Yeah. And I said we're on YouTube Live all the way through July 14th. Um, because my parents are 81 and so I go spend time with them in Pennsylvania. So that's where I'll be. Awesome. Yeah. 
And we're also on newhopevolcano.com if you need some information. I also send out a weekly email letting you know what's going on, giving you the notes ahead of time, who's preaching, etc. If you want that email, all I need is your email address. And I know you're thinking, summer's coming. I could find a way to serve and help out around here. Oh, I just saw something good the other day. Uh, I think it was at Celebrate Recovery. It said, you know how some people are critical of things that are happening in their church? They go talk to their friends about, man, this thing. Mm -hmm. Well, that's because they're not serving, right? You yeah. find a problem, fix yeah. it. Yeah. 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 If you want to know how to fix it, I got some ideas. Uh, all glory and honor are his. Mahalo. Thank you, Chris. Um, you know, so every week Chris comes here and she shares all of these great small groups. And I was going to share something about Bible study, but actually uh, that discipleship class that they're taking after, after service here, we're missing out, guys. I, I, I haven't been able to go. And whoever is not hasn't gone, we're missing out because everyone I talk to, they are just blessed beyond explanation. They are so blessed. And so I wanted to just share that, hey, we have small groups. If you want to dig in, dig into God's word and, and find more fellowship, the small groups are where it's at. You know, Wednesday night, we're almost done with the book of Acts. I think we've got two more chapters to go. And um you know, I've read the book of Acts so many times. I've read the book of Acts. I have never come out of the book of Acts with an understanding that I have today uh, because we've studied it in the Wednesday night Bible study. I mean, almost line for line, almost line for line. Um, and so, so much revelation, so much knowledge is being bestowed on us Wednesday night. And if you guys aren't there, you guys are missing out on Wednesday night. <laughs> but... Also, I want to I wanna add this. We have two more chapters in Acts, and then we're going to take a break for one week, and then we're going to start season four of The Chosen. So I, just wanted to, I wanted to give you guys a heads up because um, I know that some of you watch The Chosen. You guys have been following. Some of you have seen it, but we will be watching it here on these screens and this um, sound system. And that has been an amazing experience for us because the word that we've been studying now comes to life on the screen, right? And so it, that is an amazing time as well. So in, in about three weeks, four weeks, we will be starting The Chosen. I'll let you know every week. I'll let you know until we get there. Um, I think that's it for announcements. We are about to collect the tithes and the offerings. Um, like Chris said, we have a website, newhopevolcano.com. If you would like to give your tithe or your offering um, electronically or on your cell phone or computer, you can do that on the website, newhopevolcano.com. There is a click down menu that says give online. You can give your tithe or your offering that way. If you're in the building and you want to give your tithe or your offering, we have the offering bowl in the back where Pastor Ray and Mahi is. You can drop your tithe or your offering into the bowl. Um, we say all of that, of course, just to say that if you are visiting us for the first time, Please hold back on your money and just be blessed with what the Lord has in store for you this morning. If you're visiting us from another church, we ask that you too, please hold back on your money and take it to your home church. And if this is your home church, we just ask that you please give with a cheerful heart. If we could bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we come before you as one body. And we are so humble, Lord, for your love by your love, by your grace, by your mercy. We thank you for the gift of salvation that is found in your son, Christ Jesus. We thank you for providing for us in every way, for knowing our hearts, for caring for our needs. Lord, this morning I've had multiple conversations with people who are going out and are spreading the word of God with others. And I pray that you feel those those their cups this morning as they fill others cups <clears throat> i pray a double portion blessing for them lord as they go out and fulfill the great commission lord i thank you for this time this time right now that you set apart that we all come together we come together to fellowship to hear your word but most importantly we come here to worship you lord to put you first 
above everything else in our lives. We set aside all of our stress, all of our worries, all of our fears, and we focus our hearts and our minds on you. And this morning, we lift our tithes and our offerings up to you. We pray that you multiply it in abundance. And most importantly, we pray that we use it according to your will, Father. We thank you so much for providing for us, for caring for us, for leading us, for guiding us, for calling us to you, Lord. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. And we pray in Jesus' matchless name. Amen and amen. amen. Ladies and gentlemen, if you can welcome our dear brother, Happy. He's going to share the word of God with us this morning. Thank you, brother. Now, I don't know if this mic is turned on or not. I guess it sounds like it is. Huh? Yeah, let me get squared away here. Well, good morning, everybody. Let me do my eyeball check because I want to look into your soul. Betsy, there you go. Thank you. Okay. Good to see everybody. Okay, and truly see everybody. But I can't help but to believe that uh, that what connects us is our soul and the heart that's within our soul, and to be able to look in one another's eyes. You know, the neat thing about being Christian is when you run into another Christian out there, you never run out of conversation. Okay, and I think that's pretty cool. So today, okay, we're going to, to take a look at, I think, one of the, the best um, visual aids and descriptions of experiencing the Holy Spirit that I ever come across, and I wanted to share this with you. But, you know, it was during a lesson that I was presenting in Celebrate Recovery a couple weeks ago where I stated that human beings are basically have three character traits that they present. You know, one is the character that we exhibit. Another would be the character we think we have. And the other, the character that we truly have. Anybody go to college and, and, and study the Cartman Triangle communication mom? is exactly what it's all, all about. And it was an excellent communication model. But with those um, three things, you know, we need to understand that no doubt there's good and bad in each of those. But when looking at the bad qualities, we need to come to understand that these shortcomings and our sins can block us from receiving all the joy that God has intended and created for our lives. How is it that we as Christians find ourselves in the same dilemma as the Apostle Paul when he confessed in Romans 7, 15, and 19? I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. He also says, for I do not the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do, <coughs> excuse me, this I keep on doing. Man, how is that? How is that? You know, so we're going to go take a look, okay? You know, and especially when we, we see um, in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, where it says, no temptation has overtaken you except that which is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. He gives us the way out. But still, even from Paul, we see 
that many times that's that's not the choices that we make. And I hope to explain that uh, as we go on this morning. So how is it that even with the assurance from God that he will not tempt us beyond what we can handle and also assures us that with any temptation, he's going to provide us with an escape route from sin. Why do we continue to fall short of his will for us? Much of today's sermon has actually been taken um, from the Master Life Discipleship class. We're in our second book, and it's titled The Disciples' Personalities. Okay. Now, being a visual person, I found that this presentation provides an excellent way to understand why we think, feel, and act the way that we do. It truly has been a great resource to helping me and others gain a greater understanding of the personalities that we may demonstrate at that time. In addition, it offers some guidance on how to become more Christ-like in character and our behavior. So that's where we're headed this morning. I know the pictures on your handout are kind of small, but I'll kind of fill in the details, okay, as far as what, the, what each word says. Let's take a moment to pray. Father God, we thank you so much for the blessing of being able to come here, Lord, and be in our presence and worship collectively with you, Father God. For it is when we do praise and worship, Father God, that our hearts become so aware of the Holy Spirit that comes flooding in our spirit. And what a joy it is, Lord, to connect with you. So, Father, as we go on this morning and present this lesson, I would pray that you would open up our minds and our wills and our feelings. Give us ears to, to hear and eyes to see, Father God. Help us make sense of this so that uh, we can apply it in our lives, Lord, while engaging the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ and unto you, Father. We thank you that you are with us this morning and pray that this all goes to your glory. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen. Amen. Okay. So the first uh, slide we got up there is titled The Unified Personality. Okay. Need to know, and well, I'm sure you do, God created you and I as physical and spiritual beings. The physical part came from the earth, and the spiritual part originated in God's spirit. So God made our bodies from the earth to serve several functions. First, it's our bodies that we are able to participate in the physical world. He's given us our five senses, the touch, taste, the sight, the sound, the smell, to be able to relate and engage in the world okay? and with the rest of God's creation. Okay? Our bodies make it possible to communicate with the world around us and other living creatures. It's our body that gives us a physical identity that makes us distinct, unique personalities. You know, and I often say, I believe I'm at the point for that I would be able to recognize most of you if you were walking down the highway and I was driving my car because of the distinct personality that God has created you to, to be. Okay? This is how God has created all of us. Okay? And that's why this is titled the universal personality, because we all experience that. We all experience the fact that we have those uh, five senses, that we have a soul that God breathed into, and that we have a body that he had formed. So that's all of creation. So when we take a look at the soul, 
The Bible also pictures us as a soul. The thing to understand is that we just uh, we don't just have a soul. We are a soul. Genesis 2.7 says that the first human being became a living soul when God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Therefore, God imparted his life to the person he has made. The word for soul in the Bible generally means life or the total self. When the Bible says that a person's soul is saved or lost, it's referring to the total person. The total person. Sometimes the word for soul means the heart or the seat of the will. Our desires, our affections. It's our inner human being. In fact, the word psyche originates from the Greek word for soul. So it's the soul's ability to think, to will, and to feel. And those are the things that are running across in the center of your diagrams. Okay? And these provide additional evidences that human beings are created in God's image. Okay? These three elements in regards to the mind, will, and emotion help form our distinctive personalities. Want to talk about the spirit because the Bible also pictures us as spirit. It's our spirit that directly relates us to God and his image. It gives us the capacity to be aware of ourselves and to fellowship and work with God to do his will. People and God are therefore able to communicate directly because of the spirit. When God finished creative, creating the first person, Adam, in Genesis 1.31, we see that he said, and it was good. So basically, we, we were created good. But as we come to find out, a different aspect of the spiritual nature entered the personality of human beings. That aspect is called the flesh. Now, the Bible uses the word flesh in a couple of ways. The general meaning is body, referring to the physical body. Okay? The other meaning is more symbolic, referring to the lower nature, or man's capacity to sin and follow Satan instead of God. If you look at, at your pictures, okay, you can see that there's a top door, and the top door is from the spirit to God. It's how we experience the, the vertical connection to the Lord, okay? And that's how we relate to God through our spirit, okay? Now, the bottom door, the door of the flesh, you look, is open, and it allows us to relate to Satan. With me so far? You making sense? Okay, okay. Now, we know that God created human beings with free will. Notice that the will stands between the door of the spirit and the door of the flesh. And that the door, it has handles that are on the insides. Okay. So we get to come to understand that it's us that either opens up the door to the flesh and Satan, or it's us that chooses to open the door through the spirit to, to God. And that's our will. Our will will be motivated by the flesh or it will be motivated by the spirit. And that's you and my responsibility as we're going to be learning here. Now, the will stands between okay, both the, the God, the Spirit, and, and the flesh and Satan. Now, what we know is, unfortunately, when Adam and Eve were tempted by Satan, they chose to turn from God's leading in order to follow Satan's leading. At that moment, the human being's ego, or you'll see down the center of that picture, 
what looks like a big I. Okay. I, 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 me, 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 me. Okay. It's our selfishness, our self-centeredness, which is in direct opposition to the Holy Spirit. Okay. Because the Lord tells us in Luke 9, 23, that we got to deny ourselves. Okay. Clear ourselves out of the center so that God and these dynamics we're talking about can move in. But once man opened that door to the flesh, as you know, the results were terrible. The flesh became alive, causing the mind, will, and emotions to degenerate. Through Satan's temptation, humanity transgressed God's command and fell from its original innocence. We see here that as soon as they were capable of moral action, they became transgressors and became responsible to God for closing the door of the spirit and for shutting God out. So when we take a look and gain a further understanding of uh, the condition of the natural person today, the natural person is centered in himself or herself and is open to Satan's temptation and power. This person is unable to relate to, to God personally. 1 Corinthians 2.14 says, The man without the Spirit does not accept the things that can come from the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually discerned. We're all pretty familiar with that. okay? And that's why the natural man... When you're talking to the natural man, he's not going to be able to grasp, you know, the, the spiritual presentation or you're witnessing about a Lord and Savior and God Almighty, okay? Because it's like foolishness to him. How many times have we heard, you know, Pastor Jason tell us about what it was like for him when, when before he was saved? It's just nothing registered. I don't want to hear that. Get away from me. Okay, and that's the reality of being in the personality of natural man. Consequently, our thoughts become influenced by evil and our emotions uh, control us and our will is weak. Okay, even strong-willed and disciplined people are not able to overcome the effects of our flesh. Remember we talked about flesh several sermons back, okay? Our flesh is there. We're not going to get rid of our flesh. Okay. Um, so try or stop trying to make the flesh good and manipulate it. And maybe if I do this, maybe I do that. Okay. I'll get rid of the flesh. Guess what? Okay. Ain't going to happen. So God gives us this way to be able to shut the door to the input or from Satan that affects our flesh. Okay. Bottom line, no matter how many good things we try to do, the Bible says that a natural person cannot please God. And we see that in Rome, Romans 8.8. 8. A natural person cannot please God. We have come to know that people can come to God only as the Holy Spirit draws them. Thank God. He loves us, even though we are sinners. You know, it's interesting to note that the Holy Spirit can speak to a natural person, even though the door of the Spirit is closed. And we've seen that in many examples in the Old and, and New Testament. Bottom line, with God, all things are possible. What we need to understand is that once we open the door to the Spirit, the spirit of God enters our personality and our spirit then becomes born again. Okay, with me so far? Okay, we're going to move on to the worldly Christian. Now, I don't know if I'm going to get in trouble or not, but I got to say, I think most folks in the world today are worldly Christians. I really do. Yeah. The worldly Christian still lives in the flesh, even though he or she has been born again. 
and receive the salvation of Jesus Christ. Now, at some point, this person realized that Christ could give them eternal life and open the door of the Spirit and became born again by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Christian was made alive and became a partaker of the divine nature, but unfortunately failed to grow as he or she should have. We read in 2 Peter 1.4, his divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these, he has given us... My apologies. Uh, I gotta hear, I'll just I, use I, this. I gotta hear about this worldly Christian. I gotta <laughs> hear about this. Uh, hey, I'll just okay. use this. Uh, Stan, Stan, could you put us on the wire? Y'all mm -hmm. know I need a mic because I'm so soft-spoken, yeah? <laughs> okay. Getting back to the world of the Christian. This person still lives in the flesh even though they've been born again and, and saved. At some point, this person realized that Christ could give them um, eternal life and opened the door of the Spirit and became born again by the power of the Holy Spirit. This Christian was made alive and became a partaker of the divine nature. But like I said, unfortunately, they failed to grow as he or she should. I'm going to finish up reading Second Peter 1.4 that says, Through these he has given his very great and precious promises so that through them we may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. The passage then goes on to list character traits a Christian needs to add as he or she grows. Second Peter 1, 5 through 7 says, Make every effort to add to your faith goodness and to goodness knowledge and to knowledge, self-control, and the self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, and the godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. It's basically the fruit of the Spirit. Okay. What we have come to know is that if the person does not do these things, they will be ineffective, unproductive, nearsighted, and blind. The person will have, quote, forgotten that he has been cleansed from his past sins, end quote. That's from 2 Peter 1.9. These characteristics descri that describe the worldly Christian are characteristics that identify Christians who haven't learned or not been taught how to grow and live in the spirit. And they remain as they were when they were first born again. They are still babes in their faith, although they may have been believers for many years. Do you guys remember back in February, I think, when we were doing the sermon, the Hall of Faith from Hebrews 11? Okay. Remember how Paul, or the writer had admonished the Christians, okay, we see in 1 Corinthians, that some of them who had been saved for up to five years. And he says in 1 Corinthians 3, 1 to 3, Brothers, I could not address you as spiritual, but as worldly, mere infants in Christ. I gave you milk, not solid food, for you were not yet ready for it. Indeed, you're still not ready. You're still worldly. The worldly Christian's biggest mistake is that they left the door open to the flesh. And when we do that, when we leave that door open to Satan, it's like he can take his foot and jam it in that door, and he's got a foothold. And left unintended, that foothold then can become a stronghold. And then we really are in big trouble. Satan still has access, is what I'm saying. 
Okay. And because the flesh dominates his or her thoughts, will, and um, emotions, they're going to fall short. The, wor um, the word worldly means fleshly or carnal. This type of Christian is more, li uh, more likely to follow the physical senses and fallen nature than the spiritual nature he or she received at their conversion. Once understanding the dynamics of the worldly Christian personality, is it any wonder why we sometimes feel great conflict in our hearts when we try to have the thoughts, attitudes, and actions of Jesus? Now we can understand why such conflicts arise within us. You know, the southern line that mentions the mind, the will, and the emotions. When we leave the door to, uh, or both doors open to the spirit and the door to the flesh, we are in constant battle because the two are at enmity with one another. Okay. So we're going to be experiencing this pressure, this confusion, this, this dilemma of conflict. Okay. And, and so we can use that as an indicator and a measuring stick, okay, that we got some work to do. That we need to check to see if we've left that door, okay, uh, at the bottom open to Satan. Because all, if we didn't, there wouldn't be this conflict because all of our input would be coming from the door from the Holy Spirit. So a news flash for you is that if we don't allow Christ continually to be the master of our life through his spirit, we're worldly Christians. Worldly Christians. Although we have allowed Christ to enter in our life, we still struggle to control our own life. And what I referred to before in the vertical center is that the big eye of the old nature still wants to dominate us. Worldly Christians continue to keep open the door of the flesh allowing their old nature to determine what they think, do, and feel rather than following the Spirit of God. It's these competing influences that causes the conflict, as I said earlier. It's like they hear Satan's voice through their flesh, and they hear God's voice as his Spirit speaks to them um, through their own spirit. Okay. Therefore, er, they hear the voice of self through the mind, will, and emotions, and therefore, their soul becomes the battleground. Okay? So understand, it's like, as human beings, okay, we're created with a soul. And that soul has a human spirit. I guess it'd be like our conscience, yeah? Okay? But it's the Holy Spirit that is allowed to enter in to our spirit that allows us to apply our will to God's glory. But it all got to come from the Holy Spirit. We can't do it on our own. How can we ever have victory? In, in this kind of environment or situation where both doors are open and we're constantly bombarded by either the flesh, you know, or the Holy Spirit. Do not despair. God loves us. And there is nothing we can do or not do that's going to make his love for us any different. He wants to be our Lord and give us the daily victory in our souls. Okay. Remember, Jesus ascended okay, and resurrected okay, to sit at, at the right hand of God the Father. Okay. And he promised us and he had given each person that believes 
okay? The Holy Spirit that dwells within. And it's God that, that's mediating for us in heaven, talking to the Holy Spirit, saying, oh, man, you got to tell that happy dude to be more loving, okay? He sounded pretty mean before, okay? And that's just how this whole thing is orchestrated, okay? Moving on to the spiritual Christian. A lot more information in, in this part. First of all, notice that the picture of the spiritual Christian, um, that there's been a cross that has been placed in the center. We see that the door to the spirit, the door on the top, and uh, is open. But the door to the flesh has been closed. You see that it's closed down there? Galatians 2.20 has been added under the heading, and the word crucified has been written across the word flesh. Again, I want to point out that the word will is located between the door of the spirit and the door of the flesh. When we're willing to let Christ master our life, his death on the cross and his resurrection gives us a life of victory. We can call on him and be open to him to motivate us to move our will in accordance to his will. You know, in Galatians 2.20, Paul tells us, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So we cruc crucified our flesh with Jesus Christ. Now, because this is an ongoing act of our will, the indwelling Christ helps us to keep the door of the Spirit open and the door of the flesh closed. So as we put our old self to death, the Spirit of God gives us daily life uh, and victory in Jesus Christ. When we do this, we become filled with the Spirit of God, and we are able thereby to live in the Spirit because we have that door open, and he's constantly uh, feeding us. God takes control of our mind, our will, our emotions, and therefore, in addition, our soul and body. That makes us the whole person. So now do you see um, the contrast between the natural man that cannot perceive anything from God and the worldly Christian that has both doors open, they're saved, but they're still not growing in, in Christ? And what we're talking about here, the spiritual question, uh, Christian. Okay. The spiritual Christian continually has to walk in the spirit so that we won't be able to or want to yield to the desires of the flesh. Next category is steps to victorious living. And it's important to understand that our victory is not automatic. As long as we live in our body, we continually fight the good fight, the good fight of faith. And that's why we walk by faith and not by sign. But fear not, God promises us victory in him. The battle belongs to him, but we have to go to him to experience his blessings that he has in store for us. Now, in the Master Life Discipleship class, there are scripture verses that we all had to memorize in order to present this very lesson uh, to others. And are also in very ways we have learned to gain victory in Christ. It's been such a blessing to experience. So let me just run through some of these. Okay. That, uh, we have memorized. And as I go ahead and recite them, each one of them is going to apply to a certain aspect of the spiritual Christian. And it's through our scripture memory 
that helps us remember the points that need to be making when we're talking to a non-believer or somebody we want to lead to Christ. Okay. Philippians 2.13 says that it is God who works through us to act and to will according to his good purpose. I remembered that one. <laughs> okay. It, it's God who works in us. So that would be pertaining to the, the will that's written in the center. Here we learn that God helps us to want to do his will and then gives us the ability to do it. As an act of our will, we can claim Galatians 2.20 as our own experience. Moving on to Ephesians 5.18. Basically says, be filled with the Spirit. This is where we ask God, or ask the Holy Spirit to fill our personality and to keep filling us so that it can guide us, teach us and give us the power to be a spiritual person that we desire to be. I know Pastor Jason loves Romans 12 too, okay? That says, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Okay. So again, okay, that's a, a addressing the mind and how we need to have it transformed. I don't know if I shared this in here, but there was a time when um, I recommitted myself to the Lord and uh, God intervened in, in my life and um, this was in, in jail where I was talking, you know, hip slick and cool like everything else. Um, God intervened in, in my life, and you know, I started telling everybody about Jesus. And the inmates just kind of looked at me. It's like, I don't know where they took you, but I think they brainwashed you. Okay. And, and, and I share that at first it, that it was that upset me, but the more I thought about it, the more I thought to myself, "Right on, God, I know I needed my brain washed." Okay. <laughs> In Galatians five twenty two and twenty three, this is dealing with our emotions. It says the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. Goodness, faithfulness, uh, self or uh, faithfulness, gentleness. I have a hard time remembering that. And, and self control. Against such things, there are no law. Okay. So basically, as we walk in the spirit, okay, these are the things that we're going to experience to help us. Okay. And, 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 lost control, okay? And really come to find out after further study, okay, they didn't lose control. It was by demonstrating that anger that to them was control, okay? So for many of us, it's not anger management we need to experience, okay? It's about our need for control and power that comes through, okay, the flesh and Satan. Romans 6, 12, 13. Do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its desires. Do not offer the parts of your body to sin as instruments of wickedness, but rather offer yourself to God as those that have been brought forth from death unto life and offer the parts of your body to him as instruments of righteousness. It's so awesome. Sandy and I will, will be called to do something um, in regards to our ministry. We know that in and of ourselves, if we were to be, you know, leaving that door to the flesh and Satan open, we wouldn't want to do it at all. 
excuse me, I'm sitting in my recliner and I'm watching Wicked Tuna. Don't bother me. Okay. But we're constantly amazed when we come back and it's like, wow, the Holy Spirit has allowed me to do this and I am so blessed. Okay. Our body is a gift, uh, God's gift to us so that we can have an identity and participate in the world and communicate with others. It is not evil in itself. Only the flesh or our sinful nature is evil. Jesus came to live in our body and to make it instruments of righteousness instead of instruments of sin. Therefore, let us present our body and all its members to God to do well. I love this one prayer that I think it was in the Master Life book where it talked about giving God the parts of our body, you know, and the prayer was all about, God, I give you my eyes to allow me to see only those things that you have intended for me to see. Lord, I give you my mind so that you can instill in me the righteous thoughts of a righteous life through Jesus Christ. You know, and the prayer goes on to, to list every part of our hands, our arms, our legs, our feet. Mm -hmm. I allude the subject of our stomach. Okay. First Corinthians 6, 19 to 20 says, Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You're not your own. You're bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. And also, another favorite of Pastor Jason's is Romans 12:1. Okay. That says, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, because this is our spiritual act of worship. So as we fully submit ourselves to God and the Holy Spirit helps us to master our minds, will, emotions, our bodies, and our soul through the power of Jesus Christ. The life we live now, we live by faith in the Son of God, as Galatians 2.20 says. So as we obey Christ and his commands, he lives in us and us in him. Christ lives in the world through us. I'm going to repeat that. Christ lives in the world through you and me. That's the responsibility that we have been given, to be ambassadors for Christ, to praise his name and give him the glory every chance that, that we get. So we're continually being filled by the Holy Spirit, and we overflow with the love, peace, praise, and thanksgiving because we're walking hand in hand with the Lord. As spiritual Christians, we get to experience rivers of living water flow from, from us to other persons as a witness to Christ who lives in you and me through the Holy Spirit. Now, after learning about each of these personalities, I need to ask which one are you? Which one are you? Are you the natural person whose spirit is dead? Do your bodily senses and your natural desires control you? Or are you a worldly Christian who has allowed Christ to enter your life but is still being mastered by the desires of your flesh? Is the big I still in control? Or are you a spiritual Christian 
who has been crucified with Christ and being led by the Holy Spirit. If you have recognized that you are the natural man and gone without engaging in an intimate, loving relationship with God the Father and would like to change this now, please say this prayer with me. And if the rest of you in the body could also say it okay, to get a covering over the worldly Christians. And we pray these things as spiritual Christians. Repeat after me. Dear God, I now see that I am a sinner. I want to turn from my sins. And I ask your forgiveness. I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. I believe that he died for my sins. And that you have raised him from the dead. And you brought him to life. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and take control of my life. Through your Holy Spirit, I want to trust Jesus as my Savior and follow him as my Lord. From this day forward, I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now for you, the spiritual Christian, let me leave you with this blessings from 1 Thessalonians 5, 23 and 24. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. Amen. Did it work? If you feel like singing, you can stay in the room. If you feel like singing on the way to the refreshment stand, I think that's ready to go. You can make your way out through the door here on my left. If you're heading out, looks like the weather hasn't improved. Still raining, still windy. When you get to Highway 11, be sure that you look both ways before you get off to the highway as the cars go up and down that road very, very quickly. Whatever you decide to do, make sure you have a very safe Memorial Day weekend. Tomorrow, lots of people will be out. God bless you and have a great rest of your week.